Hello, dear one. I welcome you once again to share the everlasting gospel with you. God bless you as you spend a few moments of your time to listen to his word. Today's topic is, the seed of the woman. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the word of God says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Contained in this Bible text is the summary of the entire Bible. The central theme of the Bible, the redemption plan, is compressed into this one text. It announces the great controversy that would exist between the serpent and the woman, and between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The text puts into perspective the battle between right and wrong, good and evil, which began way back in heaven, and how it was going to continue here on this earth and then how it is finally going to end. In Revelation chapter 12 verses 7, 8, the Bible declares, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. From this Bible reading, it appears the war started without a cause. No war starts without a cause. But Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 and 8 does not give any account as to why this war started. However, in this war, Michael and his angels fought and conquered the dragon and his angels, and there was no place found in heaven for the dragon and his angels any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. So the Bible clearly states that the dragon, that serpent of old, is called devil and Satan. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 the Bible says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law. The Son of God, when he was sent forth at the fullness of time, was born of a woman. Usually, a woman takes seed produced by a man in order to conceive. But in the case of the Son of God no man produced that seed. The seed was produced by God himself through the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 21, the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In Luke chapter 1 verses 34, 35, an angel appeared to Mary also. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Indeed, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and overshadowed her and she conceived. The angel also told Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. So God made the impossible possible. And, all these did not occur in a vacuum. Centuries before, God gave that prophecy to Isaiah the prophet. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. That Holy One who was conceived was physically born of a woman only, making him the seed of the woman. His name is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Michael, Emmanuel, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Son of Man, Son of God, Alpha and Omega, the Savior of the world, and many more. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, God tells Satan, in the presence of Adam and Eve, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Briefly, God describes how the war which started in heaven will eventually end. 
how the enmity, hostility, hatred, animosity, struggle, rancor, opposition, and acrimony between the seed of the woman, Christ, and the seed of the serpent, Satan, will play out, and eventually, how Christ will redeem his people and completely destroy Satan. Embedded in the text is how Satan would claim ownership of this world and seek to establish his kingdom, and how Christ will reveal all the devil's plans to the universe and destroy all his work. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. God declared that Christ, the seed of the woman, will finally bruise the head of the devil, and the devil will also bruise the heel of Christ. In Romans chapter 16 verse 20 and Leviticus chapter 22 verse 24 the word, bruise, also means, crush. Therefore, crushing the head of Satan indicates the final annihilation, total destruction, of Satan, while the crushing of Jesus' heel signifies his suffering and death on the cross of Calvary. The nail marks on Jesus' hands and feet and the scar on his side will be eternal reminders of the fierce strife in which the serpent bruised the woman's seed. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 6. God made it clear that two kinds of bruising, crushing, will occur. One to the heel of the woman's seed and the other to the head of the serpent's seed. One bruising has occurred already at the cross of Calvary when Christ suffered and died on man's behalf. And this emphasizes the point that the other bruising, crushing of Satan's head, will definitely take place in the fullness of time. Sometimes people become skeptical and they ask, Did God know beforehand that the angel, Lucifer, would later become Satan? If he did, why did he create him in the first place? Also, did God know beforehand that Adam and Eve would later become disobedient to him? If he did, why did he create them in the first place? Indeed, God is omniscient, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-wise. He tells the end from the beginning. In Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9, 10, God says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Nothing is hidden from the eyes of this all-seeing God and nothing is unknown to him from eternity past to eternity in the future. God knew perfectly well at the time he was creating Lucifer that the angel would later become proud and fall because of iniquity. God knew also that some of the heavenly angels would agree with Satan and they too would fall with him. But he also knew very well that many more angels would choose to love God and remain obedient to him forever. God created every angel with the freedom of choice. They were not created as robotic beings. No, not at all. They have the choice to will and do good or the choice not to do so. Consider this. Do you think God would be threatened to stop doing his pleasure? Stop creating the universe and all the living beings? Merely because some angels will choose to do wrong? No, no, no. His counsel shall stand, and he will do all his pleasure. In the same vein, God created man, Adam and Eve, and gave them the freedom of choice. God knew perfectly that Adam and Eve would be lured by Satan to use their choice wrongly. But he also knew very well that when Adam and Eve got the chance to live, Many of their descendants would choose to love God and be obedient to Him no matter the odds. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11 the Bible says, He shall see the labor of his soul, and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. The joy of justifying many satisfied his soul and God pledged to work unceasingly to uplift man despite his fall. And since the fall of man, the work of God has been the effort to restore him back to the image of God. The image man lost due to his fall. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 Jesus says, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. God created man in his own image and after his own likeness, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, so man was perfect from the day he was created. Only one thing marred the perfection of man. Only one thing brought man down from his elevated image and position. And that thing is sin. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 the Bible says, 
and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Since the fall of man, the work of God has been an effort to save man from sin. To take man out of sin and make him perfect once again. But God will not accomplish this without man's choice. Only those who wholeheartedly choose to allow Jesus to accomplish this work in them will be justified by him. Someone asked this question, was there anything created that was not from God? So, in effect, did God create sin? The word of God says God created all things, visible and invisible. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 17, the Bible says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. God created angels as well as man. God gave them wisdom and intelligence, and they had absolute control over their own thoughts. God could have created automated, robotic, programmed beings that he could remote control. But God is love, 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, so he gave freedom of choice to all his created beings. This implies that God did not create the actions of man or angel. In the wisdom of God, every angel or man should have an innate willpower, the willingness to love God and do His will, or the choice to do otherwise. Moreover, due to the love of God, He gives guidance and caution to all created beings against making wrong choices. That's why God commanded Adam and Eve to use their choice wisely. Lucifer was created perfect, without sin. God finished his work of creation, and there was no sin. Everything was good and perfect. You were the anointed cherub that covers, and I had put you in the holy height of God where you were. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created, until iniquity was found in you. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 14, 15. From this Bible text, we see a perfect Lucifer after his creation. God did not create sin and put it into Lucifer at his creation. Nothing in the text suggests that. God did not create sin. Sin came when Lucifer decided to use his choice wrongly. He used his wisdom and intelligence in order to achieve something deceitfully. So, sin resulted from the decision and working, the action, of Lucifer. The actions of a person or a being emanates from his own thoughts or beliefs. God does not, and will not control that innate right of a person or being. God did not create the actions of Lucifer or man because God did not make them robots. He gave them the freedom to decide and make choices. And God always advises us to make right choices and live. This is because we will be accountable for our own thoughts and actions. So did God create sin? No, not at all. God created all things perfectly. However, God created intelligent, free-thinking beings, not programmed robots. And sin, which is a thought and an action, was thought of and initiated by Lucifer, who became Satan. Nothing is more plainly taught in scripture than that God was in no wise responsible for the entrance of sin that there was no arbitrary withdrawal of divine grace, no deficiency in the divine government, that gave occasion for the uprising of rebellion. Sin is an intruder, for whose presence no reason can be given. It is mysterious, unaccountable. To excuse it is to defend it. Could excuse for it be found, or cause be shown for its existence, it would cease to be sin. Our only definition of sin is that given in the word of God. It is, the transgression of the law. It is the outworking of a principle at war with the great law of love which is the foundation of the divine government. The Great Controversy 88, 492.2 Therefore, in the nutshell, the war that started in heaven, millennia before, has not ended. The battle place was moved from heaven and came down to this earth when Adam, the ruler of this earth was deceived and his dominion, given to him by God, was stolen from him by Satan. 
From the time Satan conquered Adam, Satan has portrayed himself as the ruler of this world. But the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus did not only pay the price of our sin but he will also crush the head of Satan completely to give us victory. We must, therefore, seek to establish a close, intimate, and personal relationship with Jesus. God has given us eternal life but that life is in his Son Christ Jesus. 1 John 5 verse 11 This is not a fairy tale. This is the everlasting gospel. This is where we end today's message. Thank you for your time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Remember to subscribe to our channel.